Hi, I'm Garmarik One, and this is Midgardia's Cool Crowdfunding Show. I'm here today with Banana Chan and Sadia Bees. How's it going? Good, how are you? I'm doing pretty well. So, uh, y'all are here to tell us about uh, Suburban Consumption of the Monstrous. So, Sadia, why don't you tell us a little bit about that? The Suburban Consumption of the Monstrous is a collection of American freeform games written by myself and Banana. Um, American freeform is kind of a LARP style that is developed in America. Uh, it combines, in my opinion, like a lot of like interesting things from tabletop into LARP, um, like a lot of more mechanics involving like cards or prompts that happen mid-game. Um, and ours all focus on horror that takes place in the home, generally around the dinner table. Um, there are a lot of themes of like dysfunctional family, um, kind of discomfort and pushing back against like really traditional strict family roles, um, and uh, with a lot of good monsters thrown in. So uh, can you give us an example of one of the scenarios? Yeah, for sure. I would love to. Um, one of the first games I was really excited to do for this anthology is called What Lies Beneath. Um, and What Lies Beneath is inspired by kind of like, I would say a really prototypical horror scenario. Um, it's based around a family where the, young the youngest family member has recently died um, and is now haunting that family. Um, my biggest inspiration was Hereditary, uh, especially like that that famous like monologue Tony Collette gives, um, where they have like a fight at the dinner table um, about the youngest sister's death. Um, so in what lies beneath, um, one person is playing the the dead uh, youngest sibling, um, and they actually play the whole game um, beneath the table. Um, and <laughs> they influence the game by, like, knocking and scratching at the underside of the table, which has different, like, mechanical effects, and um, possessing family members by, like, grabbing their ankles beneath the table. <laughs> um, so that was, like, one of, like, my personal favorites and, like, touchstones for, um, like, where I really wanted to go um, with games in this anthology. Um, I know Banana has like a different, a different fave to highlight, so I'd like to also throw this over to her. So I actually had a lot of fun play testing that game, uh, first of all, because we had uh, one of our friends, Aaron Catanose, is under the table, like grabbing people by the ankles, uh, which was great. Um, and I think my favorite out of the anthology is Our Child, uh, which basically requires, it's a three player game. And two of the players are parents who have created a child for whatever reason, uh, the game will like, ask you why they created a child. Uh, and then the third player plays the child. And so this child is made out of magic. They are not uh, really from this world and they ask of the other two players, they ask the parents uh, for weird things every night. So you're playing out one of the nights, you have to uh, make tea for them, you have to comb their hair, you have to tuck them into bed. So it's like really creepy and weird. Uh, but the creepiest part of this is that the child gets to do like weird things by asking things from the parents like, can I have a lock of your hair? Or uh, can I, you know, have a knife before I go to bed? So these like really creepy and like unsettling things uh, that this, this you know, this child, this player who's playing a child uh, is asking for. So I would say that one's my favorite out of the anthology. <laughs> can I have a knife before I go to bed? Good. I mean, you know, sometimes you I just- play test it. <laughs> I was playtesting as a child, so that's what I asked for. <laughs> Listen, sometimes you gotta wake up and cut some steak or something, and it's a pain to find a knife, you know. Yeah, you have to be prepared for any situation that you might find yourself in, really. Yep. 
and when exactly. you've been and when you've been created by you know magic and dreams and possibly a pile of googly eyes, uh, that's a real problem. It it for real is. <laughs> so what what brought what uh, brought this project about? Um, so Banana actually reached out to me. We hadn't worked together um, on game design previously. I had been an artist for Jiangxi, so we had like a little bit of a professional connection. Um, but um, we just both are really, really passionate about horror. Um, so it was just a really good fit. Um, we started like brainstorming what we wanted like the themes to be what like our inspirations were um and then yeah just started writing a collection together um it's kind of amazing how smoothly it all went i feel um yeah. like it's like very compatible ideas about horror and interests and i feel like they they all match really well Banana Chan is, is a good part of that. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> I know. Yeah. I was just going to say, I think a, a large part of that has to do with like our interests in movies too. Like mm -hmm. we just have, we just share a lot in common when it comes to like the movies that we watch. And a lot of these film or a lot of these games uh, are heavily inspired by, you know, films like uh, you mentioned earlier, um, uh, hereditary. Sorry, I was thinking Coherence, but Coherence is also another one of the games that it's inspired by. Um, so Hereditary, Coherence, uh, Midsommar, those kinds of games, or those kinds of films. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, writing a, a, a free, writing a LARP, you know, dinner table thing uh, in these uncertain times, by which I mean COVID, uh, must have present, <laughs> presented some difficulties. So how, how'd y'all deal with that? Um, I feel like we knew from the beginning that our main focus was on small player count games. Um, I have a lot of love for like digital LARPing um, also, but that definitely, it was not the focus of this anthology. Um, when we started, it was kind of like vaccine was on the horizon, but also I wanted to think of games that you could play with like your household um, or game sizes that are more like equivalent to like a tabletop RPG group. Um, so it's still a way to see people in person and play in person, um, but it doesn't have the same risks as like going to a convention or going to like an in-person like 60 person game. Yeah. And we've also separated the book into uh, chapters by player count. So we have a whole section for solo games. Uh, we have a section for two player, one for three, one for four, and so on. Nice. That's, that is very handy for these uncertain times. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Does that kind of fear and paranoia play into any of the scenarios? I feel like I was channeling some of it into, for some reason I channel more of my COVID anxiety into sci-fi games than these which are a little bit more like supernatural horror. Um, I feel like a lot of them still went like very personal, um, but I don't know if any of them touch on at least what like are my COVID anxieties. I don't know. Um, what do you think, Banana? I think um, I would say the one game that sort of touches on uh, it, it's more broad. It's not just COVID anxieties. I think it's like end of the world anxieties, uh, which is the Y2K game. Um, so we have a game that's uh, uh, basically takes place during Y2K. You're at like a, a New Year's Eve party and, uh, you know, you're all having food and you're enjoying your time. But then at the very end, you're not sure if the world ends or if it does. Uh, so that's, I think that's sort of related to our anxieties about the state of the world as a whole. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's, uh, that's fair. So what distinguishes a American freeform LARP from, uh, from other, you know, genres of LARP? I, I know we touched on this a little bit earlier, but... Um, 
Yeah, so American Freeform is kind of like um, developed out of like con game culture, um, as well as like it's heavily influenced by Nordic Freeform LARP. Um, so main things about it is um, most American Freeform LARP is very low prep. Um, they're games that are designed to be picked up and played by a group of people in a couple hours. Um, and a lot of them have kind of like um, low requirements as far as like sets and costuming and things. It's kind of like do as much as you want to make it fun, but like none of those things are required parts of the games. Um, Banana's done, I think, a little bit more research on American Freeform and like what Lizzie Stark has written about it. I have a quote up from Leaving <laughs> Mundania. Actually, I'm just going to paraphrase it. Um, but basically, Lizzie Stark did uh, a whole article on what American Freeform is. Um, and she basically says that they are semi live. So, like, the players physically embody their characters for at least a part of the play experience. Um, they feature intense focused play. Uh, they often use scenes. So, um, rather than like one long dinner party, uh, it's like several short scenes. Um, within this dinner party, I guess, if you were going to play with a dinner party setting, uh, they're created by Americans, uh, usually. Uh, they feature transparency in game design. They use meta play or meta techniques. Uh, so so people know, like, you know, what's going on at all times. Uh, they don't entirely dispense with the physical props that uh, we all love. So like Sadia said, they don't use, um, uh, we don't always use, you know, buffer swords or we don't always have to dress up. Uh, sometimes if you want to, then yes, you can definitely integrate those into play, but uh, it's not a requirement. Um, and also they're for a handful of players over a short period of time. So the player count is never more than like, I don't know, I would say like 12 players, right? So the, the player count is usually a lot smaller um, and they're played for over uh, a course of like four hours or less. So you can play uh, a game, say in an hour or two hours. Right, it's not like a full weekend event. Yeah. Right. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, they're usually also like, uh, I feel like other American LARP tradition is mostly campaign LARP, um, and mm -hmm. free, American Freeform focuses a lot on one-shots. It's like you have this one really intense experience, and then that game is over, that play, that character is over, and you can move on to something else. Right, as opposed uh, to the, the archetypal like Vampire the Masquerade kind of uh, long-term game. Yeah. No. Oh. oh, you're back, I think. Yeah, I am back. Right Sorry about that. I don't know what happened. Computers. Y2K. It, it could be Y2K at any moment. <laughs> um, but yeah, I would say that like American Freeform is the best way to describe these games. Um, but they get pretty experimental. I think they have elements of... Um, like directly from tabletop, they have elements from um, more like immersive um, full day type LARP. Um, they're really kind of a very diverse and varied set of games. Yeah, some of them also sort of bridge the gap between American Freeform and Parlor LARP, but I, I feel like there's so many crossovers between like Parlor LARP, uh, Black Box, and um, American freeform as a whole, that it's like, I don't know, they're all the genres sort of mingle together. Yeah. <laughs> Cross pollination, yes. Yeah. For sure. So, uh, so, are there any other elements of suburban consumption of monstrous that you'd like to highlight, aside from the fantastic name, by the way? I, I'm not sure if I said good name. <laughs> Thank you. Um, I don't know. I guess. Um, I think it's like a really fun anthology for horror fans. I feel like if you are into horror, we touch on 
a lot of different types of horror, a lot of like fun, fun horror themes. We've got ghosts, we've got cannibals, we've got um, <laughs> we've got just evil dads, you know, the whole the whole kind of range in there. <laughs> um so um yeah i think like this anthology is kind of like our love letter to horror as a genre um in many ways um and also i think it it does have some really fun like personal themes and exploration in it um like Everyone has a family. Most people, I would say, have kind of a complicated relationship with their family. Um, and I feel like horror is just such, like, a rich genre to explore um, things that are hard to talk about, like tensions that are difficult to explore in other ways. Right, absolutely. So I do have one last question. Um, sure. is this the kind of compilation that would be good for somebody just getting into, you know, the idea of LARPing, or is it more of a trail off at the um, end of the sentence? <laughs> totally. I would say it's, it's a good anthology for first-time LARPers. I would recommend if you have, it's better, I think, if you have other roleplay experience, but I think if you're, like, coming from tabletop, it's a great first-time um, LARP experience. If you're coming in and have no experience with role play, I think it might be more difficult. But if you're coming in from either a theater background or a tabletop RPG background, I think that there are a lot of games in the anthology that are great starter games. Excellent. Yeah, I absolutely agree with that. Because I think these uh, sometimes these games, like people get a little intimidated by them uh, when they, they hear the word LARP. Uh, <laughs> But I think like they are sort of like acting exercises, so they're not, you know, that that might be a little um, easier to digest when it's like framed that way. Yeah, um, actually, two of my playtesters were first time LARPers um, for one of Bananas games. Um, oh, gosh, I'm blanking on the name of the cult game. Oh, um... Oh gosh, clarity. Uh, clarity comes to dinner. I was clarity like, there yeah. you go. Yeah, um, and both of them would said that they would love to LARP again, which is like, if there is a first time LARPer, that's always my goal is they want to try LARP again. Um, so I think, yeah, it also always helps um, to have someone who has done it before help guide people into the experience. Um, but I think we also focused in our text on setting up a lot of things for the player to, like, feel secure going into the game. So there are a lot of, like, character development questions. Um, some of the games you really know, like, what beats the game is going to hit before you go in. Um, and I think, yeah, I feel like the biggest kind of, like, hump into getting people into LARPing is um, just like making them feel secure in this scenario. Right. Yeah. Get over that initial like, I feel like it's going to be goofy or like Yeah, or yeah. like, oh my god people are going to like be looking at me. Yeah. Yeah. And we also have uh, a set of calibration tools in the very beginning, so if players feel like uh, they're not sure of something, then they can definitely use those tools to, uh, you know, redo something or pause and take a break or a breather or something like that. So we have uh, a bunch of safety slash calibration tools that we've added in the beginning of the book. Which is, of course, important for, you know, the horror genre and all that fun stuff. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah um yeah we also did include like content warnings and stuff for each game because some of them do touch on pretty intense topics i would say yeah i think one of the games also requires someone to like sit or like lay down on the table and pretend that they're being eaten so yeah. that one's definitely <laughs> like that one's a really cool game for sure uh but you know obviously not all of these games are for everyone um and yeah there are content warnings and people can definitely read um read them before thinking if they want to play them 
Right on. Well, I'm glad to hear it. It sounds like a, a really wonderful product, and honestly, I have some people I want to do some of these with now. <laughs> awesome. Um, thank you so much. Yeah. Thank I, you. <laughs> I'm glad to have both of you on, and uh, yeah, for those of you watching at home, there's, there's a link down below in the description. And uh, click that. Go back to Kickstarter, or follow it if it's not up yet. I don't think it's up yet. Um, it's not up yet. It will be live on October 5th, so very soon. Excellent. Yes, back to Kickstarter. Numbers go up, <laughs> it's good, you'll get a notification, all that fun stuff. And, uh, yeah. Have a good night, yeah, everybody. Thank, <laughs> thank you so thank much you. for having us on. Bye. <laughs> See ya. Bye.